Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Coding with Estefania. In this video, we're gonna practice your coding and problem solving skills with the return largest numbers in arrays challenge using JavaScript. You can find this challenge on Free Code Camp's curriculum. Please note that there are many different ways to solve the same problem, so this is just one alternative and you're welcome to share yours in the comments. So let's begin. First of all, let's check out the problem description. Here we can see that our goal is to return an array, an array consisting of the largest number from each provided subarray, arrays within arrays. For simplicity, the provided array will contain exactly four subarrays. That is very important, it can make things a bit simpler, and I will show you how to write the code if we assume that it has exactly four subarrays. And I will also show you how to write the general form of this solution to work with an array of any size. Here we have a clue as well. Remember, you can iterate through an array with a simple for loop and access each member with array syntax, with this array syntax where we have the square brackets and the index inside the square bracket. Let me start by defining the function. The function is called largest of four. And our argument is going to be called r from array, an abbreviation of array, right? What do we need to do first? Our first step should be to write a line of code where we are going to define an empty array. This array is the array that will hold all the largest numbers from the subarrays. And this is the array that we are going to return from the function. So you can see that we are going to do something here in between this step and this step to make sure that this array will have all the largest numbers. And to give you an idea of the type of input that we're going to get, let me copy and paste here one of the test cases that we have from Free Code Camp. I will write this in multiple lines so you can see this better. Here, we are calling the largest of four function and we are passing as an argument an array. You can see the blue square brackets. This is the main array and the main array has four nested arrays, four subarrays. Each one of those subarrays has numbers, has integers, and we have to find the largest integer in each one of them. For example, here that would be five. Here that would be 27. Here that would be 39. And here that would be 1001, but we can see that here in the example. Our goal is to write code that will handle any subarray of this kind. Great, so let's write our second line of code here. To start analyzing all of the nested arrays, we will need to iterate over the main array, over this argument that we are getting. This is the main array that contains the subarrays. We can do that with a for loop and we have other tools like the for each method, many other tools that we can also use for this purpose. But for now, to practice your for loop skills, I will use a for loop. And here I am going to start by defining a loop variable. And then since we know that the main array will only have four subarrays like we have over here, it only has four nested arrays. We know that we will only need four iterations. This is not true in general. This is only true for this particular coding challenge since we know that it will only have four subarrays. Okay, and I will show you how you can generalize this code to work with any length. But for now, let's just keep the number four. So what are we going to do once we have each one of those subarrays? First of all, we are going to take them. We're going to store them in a variable because that, I think in my personal opinion, I think that is more readable if we assign them to a variable. We can do that with the index. And after that, we are going to define another variable called the largest number. The largest number is the largest number on that nested subarray. So let's say that we are currently checking this subarray. We need to keep track of the largest number that we found so far. We're going to do this using basic tools, okay? If you use more advanced coding tools in JavaScript, you may do this more concisely. But for now, I'm going to use simple concepts like indexing, loops, and variables, okay? So if we have this nested subarray and we are going to keep track of the largest number that we found so far, how can we do that? We need to store it somewhere, right? Well. One 
initial value that we could assign here for the largest number could be the first value in the nested array. So let's say that for this subarray, we are going to assign the number four. That is great, we can have that as a reference, and if we find another number that is larger than four, we can just update the value. And that is exactly what we are going to do here. We start with the first value, but then we are going to update it. Now we have our two variables. And after that, here comes the kind of tricky part because we are going to use a nested for loop. But don't worry, nested for loops can be super helpful and I'm going to show you how they work. Again, since we're going to start another set of iterations, we need another loop variable. Usually it is recommended to use a different name for the loop variable. So now instead of I, I'm going to use J. And we're going to iterate over the entire nested array. So we are going to iterate over the nested array and for that we just write the length over here and we increment the value of j we will have as many iterations as elements in the nested array so in this case we have four all of these subarrays have four elements so we could simplify things by just writing four over here but if we want this to work in general and we're not guaranteed to only have four elements, then we could just write the length over here, the length property. And after we have that, remember that here we are actually processing the different elements, the numbers, inside the nested arrays. After we have the numbers, what are we going to do with them? Well, we're going to check if we have found a larger number. If we found a larger number, then that means that the current value of this variable is not the largest number. So we have to update it. It's just like an iterative process. We assign this one and then we say, is this number greater than this number? No, then we need to update it. Then we check the next number. And if it's not greater than this number, we just keep the value and so on. It's a repetitive process and we're going to get the largest number in the end. So we check if the nested array at index j, so if the current element, we could also define a variable named element. I think this will enhance the readability, improve the readability of our code. So if the current element is greater than the largest number, so to be consistent, I think we should rename this variable current number. If the current number is greater than or larger than the largest number, then we just update the largest number to the current number. You can see how naming your variables appropriately can be super helpful to write readable code. And that is also super helpful to understand your code later on when you go back to it or when you share it with other developers. Great, so now we've updated the largest number and after we complete that process. After we have that loop, we already found the largest number in the nested array. So what we have to do is just adding that largest number to the array of largest numbers. Remember that we have to return an array. This one over here. This is the array that is going to store all the largest numbers that we found in the nested arrays, one per nested array, one per sub array. So we just need to add that number to the array with the push method. We can do that with the push method and we just add the largest number over here. And after that, we return the array because we completed the process. That is the basic logic of the function. So let's run our code and see the output. And we see exactly that. We see five. 27, 39, and 1001. 5, 27, 39, and 1001. Let's check other test cases that we have over here. I copy pasted some test cases here from FreeCodeCamp's website and let me just adjust the indentation so you can see them better, like this. Here we have them. So if we run our code, we see the following output. The one that we had before for the first test case, we have then 27, we, this is the second test case, 27, 5, 39, and 1001, that is correct. We also see 9, 35, 97, and this really huge number that is 1 million. 
And over here, we also see the correct values 25, 48, 21, and minus 3. Awesome, so all the test cases were correct. I promised that I would show you how you can generalize this code, so this is my final tip for you in this video. If you don't know the length of the array in advance, then you can just use exactly what we used over here. Array dot length. This will let you iterate over all the elements in the array regardless of its length, because this will be replaced by the length and you will have that many iterations, one per element in the array. Awesome, I hope you liked this coding challenge, thank you for watching, and if you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Have a great day and happy coding.